like eating your body weight in mean spires or realizing too late that you have had one glass too many of mulled wine. Watching non-stop Christmas movies is an essential part of preparing for the most wonderful time of the year. We are just celebrity presents best 25 Christmas movies. Number 25 White Christmas 1954 Having left the army following World War II, Bob Wallace and Phil Davis team up to become a top song and dance act. David plays matchmaker and introduces Wallace to a pair of beautiful sisters who also have a song and dance act. When Betty and Judy travel to a Vermont lodge to perform a Christmas show, Wallace and Davis follow, only to find their former commander General Waverly as the lodge owner. A series of romantic mix-up ensue as the performers try to help the general. Number 24 Elf 2003 Buddy was a baby in an orphanage who stored away in Santa's sake and ended up at the North Pole. Later, as an adult human who happened to be raised by Elvis, Santa allows him to go to New York City to find his birth father Walter Hobbs. Hobbs on Santa's naughty list for being a heartless jerk has no idea that Buddy was even born. Buddy meanwhile experiences the delight of New York City as only an elf can. When Walter's relationship with Buddy interferes with his job, he is forced to re-evaluate his priorities. Number 23 Gremlins 1984 Miniature green monster teared through the small town of Kingston Falls. Hijink ensues as a mild-mannered bank teller release these hideous loonies after gaining a new pet and violating two of three simple rules. No water. No food after midnight and no bright light. Hilarious mayhem and destruction in a town straight out of a Norman Rockwell. So when your washing machine blow up or your TV goes on the fritz, before you call the repairman, turn on all the light and look under all the beds. Cause you never can tell there just might be a gremlins in your house. Number 22. Bed Santa 2003. Willie Stock is a convicted conman who's led a miserable life. He drinks heavily and constantly embarrasses himself publicly. He only works once a year dressed as Santa. But then come Christmas Eve. He and his pin-sized helper dwarf markers stage elaborate robberies and take their department store for everything they got. Number 21. Trading Places 1983 Louis Winthrop is a businessman who works for commodities brokerage firm of Duke and Duke owned by the brothers Mortimer and Randolph Duke. Now they bicker over the most trivial of matters and what they are bickering about is whether it's a person's environment or heredity that determine how well they will do in life. When Winthrop bumps into Billy Ray Valentine, a street hustle and assume he is trying to rob him. He has him arrested. Upon seeing how different the two men are, the brother decide to make a wager as to what would happen if Winthrop loses his job. His home and is shunned by everyone he knows, and if Valentine was given Winthrop's job, so they proceed to have Winthrop arrested and to be placed in a compromising position in front of his girlfriend. So all he has to rely on is the hooker who was hired to ruin him. Number 20. A Christmas Carol 1951 Stubbornly refusing to believe in Christmas and to be separated from his inexhaustible wealth, the Victorian moneylender and parsimonious recluse Ebenezer Scrooge can't be bothered with the poor and destitute at the most festive time of the year. Intent on spending the holy night alone instead, the skeptical Kamajan is visited by an unexpected and sympathetic friend Jacob Marley, who will pave the way for the inevitable visitation of the otherworldly spirit of Christmas past, present and yet to come. But what do the pale ghost want? Can a wicked old miser admit the error in his way and 
embrace change in the end is scrooge ready to love and be loved number 19 tokyo godfathers 2003 christmas in tokyo japan three homeless friend a young girl a transvestite and a middle aged bum while foraging through some trash they find an abandoned newborn hena the transvestite with delusions of being a mother convinces the other to keep it overnight the next day using a key found with the baby they start tracking down the parents with many adventures along the way toward the beginning of the movie they pass by a convenience store in the background you can see the theatrical poster for perfect blue millennium actress and tokyo godfathers itself all three films were directed by satoshi kon number 18 Christmas in Connecticut 1945 Journalist Elizabeth Lane is one of the country's most famous food writers In her column she describes herself as a hard working farm woman taking care of her children and being an excellent cook But this is all lies In reality she is an unmarried New Yorker who can't even boil an egg The recipes come from her good friend Felix the owner of the magazine she works for has decided that a heroic sailor will spend his christmas on her farm miss lane knows that her career is over if the truth comes out but what can she do number 17 a christmas story 1983 christmas is approaching and 9 year old ralphie wants only one thing a red rider range 200 shot bb gun When he mentions it at the dinner table his mother immediate reaction is that she'll shoot his eye out he then decide on a perfect theme for his teacher but her reaction is like this he fantasizes about what it would be like to be red rider and catch the bad guys when the big day arrives he gets lots of present under the tree including a lovely gift from his aunt that his mother just adores but what about the bb gun number 16 Meet me in St. Louis 1944. St. Louis 1903. The Well of Smith family has four beautiful daughters including Esther and Little Tuti. 17 year old Esther has fallen in love with the boy next door who has just moved in, John. He however barely notices her at first. The family is shocked when Mr. Smith reveals that he has been transferred to a nice position in New York. which means that the family has to leave St. Louis and the St. Louis Fair. Number 15. Little Women 1994. Lucia May Alcott's autobiographical account of her life with her three sisters in Concord, Massachusetts in the 1860s. With their father fighting in the American Civil War, sister Jo, Meg, Amy and Beth are at home with their mother, a very outspoken woman for her time. The story tells of how the sister grow up, find love and find their place in the world. Number 14. The shop around the corner 1940. In Budapest, Hungary, the Matsuk and Company store is owned by Mr. Hugo Matsuk and the bachelor Alfred Kralik is his best and most experienced salesman. When Clara Novak seeks a job position of saleswoman in the store, Matsusek hires her but Kralik and C do not get along. Meanwhile the lonely and dedicated Kralik has an unknown pen pal that he intend to propose very soon. However he is fired without explanation by Matsusek on the night that he is going to meet his secret love. He goes to the bar where they have scheduled the meeting with his colleague Pirovich and he surprisingly find that Clara is his correspondent. However, ashamed after being let go, he does not disclose his identity to her. Number 13. Edward Scissorhands 1990. In a castle high on top of a hill lives an inventor's greatest creation, Edward, a near complete person. The creator died before he could finish Edward's hand. Instead, he is left with metal scissor for hands. Since then he has lived alone until a kind lady called Peg discover him and welcome him into her home. At first everyone welcome him into the community but soon things begin to take a change for the worse. The idea for the movie was inspired by a drawing Tim Burton had done when he was a teenager. 
The drawing depicted a thin, solemn man with long sablet forefingers. Burton stated that he was often alone and had trouble retaining friendships. I get the feeling people just got this urge to want to leave me alone for some reason. I don't know exactly why. Number 12. Holiday Inn 1942. Lovely Linda Mason has grown a Jim Hardy head over heels. But Swauch taper Ted Hanover wants her for his new dance partner after Fem Fatal. Lila Dixon gives him the brush. Jim's Super Club Holiday Inn is the setting for the chase by Hanover and manager Danny Reed. The music's the thing. For the drunk dance, Fred Astaire had two drinks of bourbon before the first take and one before each succeeding take. The seventh and last take was used in the film. When Irving Berlin won an Oscar for his song White Christmas from this movie, he became the first artist to present himself with an Academy Award. Number 11. While You Were Sleeping, 1995. Nursing a secret and hopeless crush on the handsome commuter who passes her booth every day, the charming loner and Chicago L ticket seller Lucy is about to have a second chance at love. During one seemingly ordinary Christmas shift, Lucy witnesses the object of her desire, falling off the platform and in one of those spur of the moment decisions. She saves him from certain death, only to be mistaken for his fiancée at the hospital. As Lucy enjoys the unexpected stroke of good luck, unable to tell the truth to his welcoming family. Unforeseen romantic affairs further complicate matters. Now, the comatose patient's suspicious brother, Jack, thinks he is onto something. Will Lucy face the consequences of what happened while the beautiful stranger was sleeping? Number 10. Miracle on 34th Street, 1947. At the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the actor playing Santa is discovered to be drunk by a whisker old man. Doris Walker, the no-nonsense special event director, persuaded him to take his place. He proved to be a sensation and is quickly recruited to be the store Santa at the main store. While he is successful, Doris learned that he calls himself Chris Kringel and he claimed to be the actual Santa Claus. Despite reassurances by his doctor that he is harmless, Doris still has misgivings, especially when she has cynically trained herself, and especially her daughter Susan to reject all notion of belief and fantasy. Number 9. Die Hard, 1988. NYPD cop John McLean goes on a Christmas vacation to visit his wife Holly in Los Angeles, where she worked for the Nakatomi Corporation while they are at the Nakatomi headquarters for a Christmas party. A group of robbers led by Hans Gruber take control of the building and hold everyone hostage, with the exception of John. While they plan to perform a lucrative heist, unable to escape and with no immediate police response, John is forced to take matter into his own hands. The fictional Nakatomi Plaza is the headquarter of 20th Century Fox. The company charged itself rent for the use of the then unfinished building. Number 8. The Bishop's Wife, 1948 An Episcopal Bishop Henry has been working for months on the plans for an elaborate new cathedral which he hopes will be paid for primarily by a wealthy stubborn widow. He is losing sight of his family and of why he became a churchman in the first place. Enter Dudley, an angel sent to help him. Dudley does help everyone he meets, but not necessarily in the way they would have preferred. With the exception of Henry, everyone loves him. But Henry begins to believe that Dudley is there to replace him, both at work and in his family's affections, as Christmas approaches. The harp playing for Cary Grant was done by Mr. Gail Lupton. Lapton's hands are seen in the film during close-up of Grant's character playing the harp. Number 7. Tangerine 2015 Transgender worker Cindy Rella, who has just finished a 28-day prison sentence, meets her friend Alexandra, another trans worker, at a donut shop in Hollywood on Christmas Eve. 
Alexandra revealed that Cindy's boyfriend and pimp Chester has been cheating on her with a cisgender woman. Cindy storms out to search the neighborhood for Chester and the woman. Alexandra hands out fire for her musical performance that evening and argue with a client who refuses to pay. The argument is broken up by the police. Razmik, an Armenian cab driver, pick up a prostitute but eject her from his cab when he discover she is not transgender. This film was shot exclusively on three iPhones along with the Moondog Lab anamorphic clip on lens and a $8 app Filmic Pro in addition to Steadicam smoothie mounts. Director Sean Baker revealed this at the Sundance Film Festival. Number 6. It's a Wonderful Life 1946 George Bailey has spent his entire life giving off himself to the people of Bedford Falls. He has always longed to travel but never had the opportunity in order to prevent rich skin flint Mr. Porter from taking over the entire town. All that prevent him from doing so is George's modest building and lawn company, which was founded by his generous father. But on Christmas Eve, George's Uncle Billy loses the business $8,000 while intending to deposit it in the bank. Potter finds the misplaced money and hides it from Billy. When the bank examiner discovers the shortage later that night, George realizes that he will be held responsible and sent to jail and the company will collapse, finally allowing Potter to take over the town. Number 5. Carol 2015 in an adaptation of Patricia Highsmith's seminal novel, The Price of Salt, Carol follows two women from very different backgrounds, who find themselves in an unexpected love affair in 1950s New York. As conventional norms of the time challenge their undeniable attraction, an honest story emerged to reveal the resilience of the heart in the face of change. A young woman in her 20s, Theresa Bellivet, is a clerk working in a Manhattan department store and dreaming of a more fulfilling life, when she meets Carol, an alluring woman trapped in a loveless, convenient marriage. As an immediate connection sparks between them, the innocence of their first encounter dims and their connection deepens. Number 4. Babes in Toyland, 1934 Holiday and Stanley Dumb try to borrow money from their employer, the toy maker, to pay off the mortgage on Mother Peep's shoe and keep it and Little Bob Peep from the clutches of the evil Barn Bay. When that fails, they trick Barn Bay into marrying Stanley Dumb instead of Bob Peep. In rage, Barn Bay unleashes the bogeyman from their caverns to destroy Toyland. Felix Knight fell in love with fellow co-star Alice Moo, who played the Queen of Heart on the set. They eloped to Yuma, Arizona and married there. Number 3. The Nightmare Before Christmas 1993 Jack Skellington, the pumpkin king of Halloween town, is bored with doing the same thing every year for Halloween. One day he stumbled into Christmas town and is so taken with the idea of Christmas that he tried to get the resident bats, ghouls and goblins of Halloween town to help him put on Christmas instead of Halloween but alas they can't get it quite right. Tim Burton has said the original poem was inspired after seeing Halloween merchandise display in a store being taken down and replaced by a Christmas display. The juxtaposition of ghouls and goblins with Santa and his reindeer spark his imagination. Number 2. Home Alone, 1990. It is Christmas time and the McLeaster family is preparing for a vacation in Paris, France. But the youngest in the family, Kevin, got into a scuffle with his older brother Buzz and was sent to his room, which is on the third floor of his house. Then the next morning, while the rest of the family was in a rush to make it to the airport on time, they completely forgot about Kevin, who now has the house all to himself. Being home alone was fun for Kevin, having a pizza all to himself, jumping on his parents' bed and making a mess. Then Kevin discovered about two burglars, Harry and Mao, about to rob his house on Christmas Eve. Kevin acts quickly by wiring his own house with massive booby trap to stop the burglars and to bring them to justice. Number 1. A Very Herald and Kuma Christmas 2011 
Six years have elapsed since Guntanemo Bay, leaving Harold and Kumar estranged from one another with very different families, friends and lives. But when Kumar arrived on Harold's doorstep during the holiday season with a mysterious package in hand, he inadvertently burns down Harold's father-in-law's beloved Christmas tree. To fix the problem, Harold and Kuma embark on a mission through New York City to find the perfect Christmas tree, once again stumbling into trouble at every single turn. One of the lies Adrian tells Mary is that Kuma worked at the White House. Carl Penn, who plays Kuma, had actually been working at the White House and took time off from that job to make this movie.